the once mighty Schalke 04 in their iconic royal blue might be on the verge of a serious crisis. From fierce competition in the UEFA Champions League less than a decade ago, they're now plummeting to the edge of existence. Can they actually pull through? Let's dig in to what went down. If Schalke gets relegated at the end of the current season, it could face serious problems. The historic German club is currently playing in the second-tier second Bundesliga after dropping from the top flight last season. Despite moving between the two divisions recently, Schalke is now in danger of going out of business. According to Sky Germany, Schalke might not be able to handle the financial fallout if it gets relegated to the third division. The club's extreme debt would make it impossible to obtain a license for the third league. This puts pressure on the players and coaches to do everything they can to save the team in the coming months. Schalke has had a good history in German football. Among German clubs, only Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund and FC Nürnberg have won more Bundesliga titles than the Royal Blues. Schalke also holds the third highest number of DFB Pokal trophies, a prestigious title in German domestic football. Even though Schalke has moved between divisions in recent times, it used to be a regular team in the Bundesliga. The club achieved success by winning the Europa League title, then called the UEFA Cup, in 1997. In the final, they faced Inter Milan in Italy and secured the victory through a penalty shootout. Schalke's latest DFB Pokal trophy came in the 2010-11 season. While they haven't clinched a major title since then, in 2018 they achieved a notable feat by finishing second in the Bundesliga. That year, their strong midfield, featuring players like Leon Goretzka, Max Meyer and USMNT leader Weston McKenney, played a key role in their success. Financial troubles have been a struggle for Schalke in recent years. The impact of the COVID-19 pandemic worsened their existing money problems, with the club even mentioning the possibility of bankruptcy. Although Schalke initially avoided Bundesliga relegation in the 2019-20 season, they ended up at the bottom the following year. Because of bouncing between divisions, the Royal Blues now have a substantial extra debt of about $179 million. However, the club's overall value may not match this amount, especially if they face relegation in May. FC Schalke 04 faced another setback at Betzenberg, proving to be the perfect opponents for first FC Kaiserslautern. Despite Kaiserslautern having lost their last seven games in the second Bundesliga, they secured a convincing 4-1 victory against Schalke on Friday night, surpassing them in the league standings. Adding to the disappointment of a challenging match against former coach Dimitrios Gramotzis, more blows followed as the match day unfolded. Hansa Rostock secured a last-minute victory on Saturday against Elversburg, and on Sunday, Braunschweig achieved its fourth consecutive win against Magdeburg. The three teams are now tied at 20 points each in positions 15, 16 and 17, with Schalke narrowly leading the competition due to a slightly better goal difference. Despite this, during their visit to the Palatinate, it was evident that many players may not have fully grasped the seriousness of the situation. Following a challenging first half, there was a glimmer of hope after halftime when substitute Darko Chernov equalized with Schalke's first chance. However, three quick goals from Kaiserslautern within just 11 minutes resulted in Schalke's second defeat of the year. The previous week, Schalke had already suffered a 2-0 loss at home against Hamburger SV. Following the defeat against HSV, the team's response to the loss against FCK was notably passive. There was no rebellion, no intervention and no mutual encouragement. This recurring trend has been observed throughout the season, despite some promising preparations that suggested a more united team. Unfortunately, this turned out to be a significant misconception, and now coach Carol Gerrards must take decisive action. Gerrards, who has been known for using strong words in the past, needs to make personal decisions. It's crucial to address players who seem indifferent to the club's fate or find the Schalke jersey too burdensome. Such players should be excluded from the starting lineup because Schalke may not survive relegation. According to information from Sky, obtaining an SO4 license for the third league is essentially impossible. The consequences of a potential relegation are uncertain, but one thing is clear. The current structure of the club would face a grim scenario. While relegation might not be a major concern for some players, as they can easily find new clubs, it poses a severe threat to the existence of the club in its current form. Certainly, there have been numerous mistakes made in and around Schalke in recent months and years, but in the current situation, those are not the focus. The priority now is to identify players who can handle the immense pressure and deliver on the field. Building market value or providing playing time for young players is no longer the main concern. The primary goal is the survival of one of Germany's largest football clubs. The upcoming Saturday match against Braunschweig is about more than just earning three points. Gerrards must assemble a team that can regain the respect of the fans and demonstrate that there is still fighting spirit in the squad. It's confirmed that SO4 icon Ralf Fehrmann won't be part of the lineup. 
The experienced player has been inconsistent, unable to replicate his performances from the last half of the Bundesliga season. After a tough performance by Fairman at FCK, it's likely that Marius Müller will replace him. Müller was one of the top goalkeepers in the league until his injury in the first half of the season. His emotional nature can inspire teammates, but it's clear that the team needs more than just one player to turn things around. Players like Dominic Drexler and Chernenov should also start the game. In defense, the new sports director, Mark Wilmots, should consider signing a new right-back. There's a possibility that John Merkin from Derry could move into central defense to bring in more speed. On the left, Tomas Aouyan might return to the team for his strong set-piece skills. Drexler is a potential candidate for the number 10 position, allowing Kenan Karaman to join the attack alongside Simon Terodde. Regardless of Gerard's decisions, if the team becomes a struggling opponent again, the coach will face difficulties because individual players' fates can no longer be the main focus. But how did Schalke really get to this point? Everything was financed with money that was never really there. They kept betting on future successes, but eventually it stopped working. Unfortunately, this happened at the same time as a worldwide pandemic, making things even worse. Even though they had decent conditions to try and move up, poor management decisions have left them with a team that's not performing well, somewhat similar to Leeds. Chelsea might have faced a similar fate, if it weren't for Roman Abramovich stepping in. The pattern seems unsustainable unless you're consistently winning or at least placing well. Eventually, if you don't replace your players effectively, it's game over. Even successful teams like Deportivo face this. It feels like football is entering a period where this situation may become more common. It's evident in lower leagues, like the Championship, where teams take risks to reach the Premier League. Even powerhouse clubs like Barcelona, with their financial troubles, could end up in a suboptimal position. In German football, contracts are often valid only in a certain league, meaning players become free agents if their team is relegated. This led to the rise of a favorite German word, Liga Unabhängigkeit, meaning regardless of which league. You can see examples on Twitter when a team fighting relegation signs a coach or player late in the season. Their contract is usually Liga Unabhängig. It's really sad what has happened to this club. Despite having 60,000 fans at every match, the team still struggles with inconsistent quality and many loaned or transferred players. Some Hertha fans used to consider Schalke a rival, but in recent years the respect for the club, especially its members, has grown significantly. Many people feel a strong connection to the struggles faced by their blue and white counterparts, witnessing consistent failures in leadership. Despite all the hardships in the last four years, Schalke fans still showed incredible support, bringing 6,000 away fans to Kaiserslautern on a Friday night during a train strike. There are only a few clubs that could demonstrate such loyalty. Remembering the glory days, like when Schalke beat Real Madrid 4-3 in the Champions League in 2015, makes their fall to the second Bundesliga even more heart-wrenching. But sometimes these things happen in football. They spend a lot of money on trying to stay relevant instead of reinventing and renovating when needed. The president at the time, who had previously rescued the team from third division troubles and led them to success, couldn't let go of the past glory when the TV money deal went down. Investing in veteran players didn't work, and they couldn't recover the investment. Trying to build from youth teams failed due to a lack of scouting network, good coaches, and a proper 10-year plan. Debts accumulated, sporting success declined, leading to bankruptcy. After renegotiating the debt, a local bank took over the team but struggled to sell it. Now they have a promising group of young players facing challenges from bigger clubs like Dortmund, Man U, and Barca poaching them. With a bit of a plan in place, they regularly draw crowds of 25,000 to what are essentially third division matches. And the financial situation is improving. So, who knows? Maybe they will actually survive. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below.